Hello and welcome to video 29. In this problem we have a billiard ball that comes and strikes the edge of a pool table, the bumper, and bounces. But the angle that it comes in at, which I'll call theta, meaning the angle before, is 40 degrees and the angle that it bounces at is a little less. It's at 30 degrees. Now, some overall ideas you want to understand about this problem is that the momentum is conserved in the x direction, and the reason that it's conserved is there's no outside forces acting on the ball in the horizontal direction. So the momentum in the x direction before has to be equal to the momentum in the, the uh, x direction after. They may look at this and say it doesn't look like the momentum in the y direction before is the same as after, and it may not be. And you may say, well, how can that be? I thought momentum is conserved. Momentum is conserved for a closed system, but in the y direction, you have a force from the billiard table that acts perpendicular in this direction. And that actually can change the momentum of the system because there's a force from an outside object, the table. Uh, also, what's going to be changing because of that force isn't just the momentum in the y direction, but also the overall energy can change. And in this case, you're going to lose some energy. That's why this angle gets less. It always has to be less if there's energy lost. Because the x component of momentum, and hence the x velocity, because the mass doesn't change before and after, has to stay constant. But the y can change. And if you lost energy, this can only get less than the y component here. So we're going to look at, in terms of the horizontal momentum, uh, we're going to look at it in terms of the impulse, so the change in the momentum, and then we'll finally look at the energy before and uh, after. So the first question we have is how fast does the ball travel after the collision? To understand this question, what we're going to do is we're going to write down a statement that we usually write down. Well, I apologize. Let me pause it while the computer catches up. Sorry about the technical difficulties. We were talking about the momentum, and the momentum in the x direction initially has to be the same as momentum in the x direction finally, because there's no outside force that's going to change that. So in terms of momentum, that's going to be m, so I'll just assume the mass is m before and after. That's going to be m times the velocity 1. I'll just call that velocity for before and this for velocity prime after has to be equal to the m v prime the x component so this is going to be cosine of theta and this is going to be times cosine of theta prime because we're given the angles we're given v the m really doesn't matter because the mass is the same before and after. We can solve for the velocity after is simply v, the velocity before, times the cosine of the angle in the beginning divided by the cosine of the angle afterwards. We were given those numbers. It came in at a 5 meter per second speed and the angle that it came in at was 40 degrees. The angle it left at was 30 degrees and that's going to give us a velocity after that a little slower at 4.42 meters per second. So as expected, it slowed down, meaning it lost some energy, but the x component of velocity stayed the same because the momentum was conserved in the x direction. So now we want to talk about the impulse. Now the impulse did not change the velocity in the x direction. There was no component of the force from this bounce that either sped it up or slowed it down. So in this case it's a little easier in that the impulse is only going to be in the y direction. I do feel compelled to say that the assumption we're making about the momentum being conserved in the x direction does assume that there's no horizontal force which we've said but that would really only be true if this was a frictionless 
surface. So real cue ball isn't probably going to do this. But if this is the angle that we're told it comes off at, this must hold true that the momentum is conserved in the x-direction. So let's look again at the impulse. So really, to get the overall impulse, we only need to worry about the change in momentum in the y direction. So that's going to be m delta v in the y direction, which is going to be m times the final velocity, or at least the y component of the final velocity, which is going to be 4.42 meters per second times the angle that it left at, or the sine of the angle, which is 30 degrees, minus the initial velocity, or speed, which was 5 meters per second, times the sine of the incoming angle, which was 40 degrees. Now, I didn't give you a mass, so we're going to have to do this strictly in terms of m. And this is going to give you an impulse, or change momentum in the y direction, that's equal to m times negative. By the way, we uh, forgot to write the negative sign for the final momentum, because that's going down. So it is going to be a negative y component which is going to give us a final y change in momentum of negative m times 5.42. The units here would be, assuming your mass is in kilogram, kilogram meters per second, or newtons times seconds, as we've talked about. So we've answered the change in momentum. We have uh, found the velocity after. The last part of this question asks us to compare the kinetic energy final with the kinetic energy initial. So let's find the Ke i is going to be 1 half m v i squared. Remember, this is a scalar quantity. Direction does not matter. We don't have to worry about the angle at all here. The number of joules doesn't depend on the angle, just on the raw speed. So that's going to be equal to m over 2 times the initial velocity, which is 5 meters per second squared, which is going to be 25 over 2, or 12.5 m. We'll just leave it in terms of m. The kinetic energy final is going to be 1 half m v f squared, which is going to be 1 half times, or m over 2, times the 4.42 meters per second squared. And when we do that, we get 9.77 m, which, as you would expect, is lower. Energy was lost. So the percentage of energy lost is going to be the Ke final minus the Ke initial over the Ke initial which is going to be 9.77 m minus 12.5 m over the initial, which was 12.5 m. Notice the m's cancel out, so even though I didn't give you the mass, you don't really need it because we're finding the percentage energy loss, not the raw number of joules. And when I put that into the calculator, 9.77 minus 12.5 divided by 12.5 gives us negative 21.8 percent. So this is negative 21.8 percent is the percentage of energy that is lost. So again, with this problem we make a very large assumption here which is that there's no horizontal force from friction or, or anything else. The only force acting is perpendicular. Because of that, the only uh, change in momentum is going to happen in the y direction, so we assume that the x momentum before has to equal the x momentum after. We solved for v prime. We got this speed. Then to get the change in momentum in the y direction, that's m delta v in the y direction, or m times that, 
gives us this change in momentum or impulse. And then to get the fraction of kinetic energy lost, we just do one half mv squared for the final initial velocity, subtract, divide by the initial, and that gives us 21.8%. As you can tell, that's the bell. I hope you find this useful.